beautiful morning we have. It is a beautiful day to celebrate the single most amazing event that our world has ever witnessed. I thank you for being here and being a part of our celebration of life. The earliest Christians, those who live within a generation or two of Christ, well, they, as life does, they began to spread out a little bit from Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria. They went here and there and elsewhere. And everywhere they went, they lit fires of faith. They told people about this man, Jesus from Nazareth. They told people about what his life was like. They told people about how he had been crucified as an innocent man. They told about how he had been risen from the grave. The world into which they dispersed was thoroughly pagan. People worshiping idols, images, philosophies, false gods, and following false messiahs. The people were superstitious, they were idolaters, they were fearful, and they could be very cold-blooded. Those who were unfortunate enough to be born as a slave, they would die as a slave. There was no getting out of that. The emperor's sword was the law. Taxes kept people oppressed and poor. If a child was born with a disability of some kind, the parents oftentimes would simply take the child out into the wilderness and leave them, leave them there to die. There were no hospitals to care for the sick or the injured. The average life expectancy was 40 years. Now because of all of that, because the world was such a hard, dark place, there were false prophets and false messiahs and philosophies everywhere, each offering their own promise of a better way, a better life, a better God. Now in that dark, cold world, Christians began to stand out. They were different from everybody else. They worshipped a man, Jesus of Nazareth. He was crucified, rose from the dead three days later. And some of those people, some of them who were called Christians, had witnessed his death and had witnessed his rising again, having seen him post-crucifixion. They were telling people that this Jesus had come into the world to rescue them, to rescue them from sin, from death, and from the power of the devil. They say that 
those who believe in this Jesus will never die, but will live forever. The resurrection of Jesus Christ from the grave is not just a life-changing event, it is an event that changed the world in a significant way. St. Paul writes, you have now been raised to new life in Christ. That's why you live and speak and act the way that you do. You are different from the worldly people around you. You are a follower of the risen Lord Jesus. When you were baptized, all of that worldliness was washed out of you, and it was replaced with a new way of living, the ways of God, not the ways of the world. You have been given a new and better way of life. Take advantage of it. This morning as we worship and celebrate the resurrection of our Lord with a nice Easter breakfast, I hope everyone enjoyed, with hopefully an inspiring worship service, and concluding with a, I'm sure, very chaotic Easter income. We celebrate together. But in the, the days and the weeks that are going to come, that Easter glow that we have, it'll begin to, to fade. And it may come down to, do we still have the energy and the strength to fight the good fight? To live as we confess as God's people. To continue living with our ultimate goal in mind. Heaven and that new heaven and earth that God will create for you. <clears throat> this we know. The death and resurrection of Jesus Christ has changed you. You are not the same person you would be without the resurrection. You have been transformed from perhaps somewhat Epicurean thinking and living like, let us eat and drink today, for tomorrow we may die. <coughs> transformed from that Epicurean way of life to a more stoic way of living. Let us live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and was raised to life for us. <clears throat> By the late first and early second centuries, the world began to clearly see evidence of the presence of the Christian faith. Pagans and unbelievers watch as Christians live as they believed and confessed. Many marveled at what they saw. One wrote, see how they love one another. Today, all over the world, as I am literally speaking these words, 
they are being echoed from pulpits and lecterns and altars and churches all over the planet. Everyone celebrating Christ's resurrection. There is no single event in human history that has brought such profound joy and comfort to so many people. So today, we gather together to thank and praise our Heavenly Father for sending His Son. We thank the Holy Spirit for giving us the gift of faith, for washing the worldliness out of us, and giving us in its place the ways of God. St. Paul reminds us, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. <clears throat> now, there is a difference, a huge difference between faith faith and trust and belief in Jesus Christ as the Son of God and in baseless, worldly optimism. I know you've heard this story before, but I believe it's worth retelling. When white men began sailing the South Pacific, Majestic ships crossed that great body of water, and they began to bring cargo to people who lived very isolated lives. These ships would come laden with cloth, building materials, beer, wine, liquor, tools other things that the native islanders had never seen before. Soon these majestic ships were coming on a regular basis, coming into the harbor to unload their cargo and to trade for things that the natives could provide. Now the islanders were deeply impressed Pressed by the ships and their cargo, they watched the white men carefully. They wanted to know what was the secret that they had. Soon, a cargo cult had developed. They imitated the white men that came on these ships. They dressed like them, they spoke like them, they acted like them. They wanted that cargo to come to them, just as it obviously had come to these other men. They sang and they danced and they prayed and they they did everything humanly possible to attract the cargo gods. But when the ship stopped coming, the cargo stopped coming. The final stage to the life of that cargo cult was utter despair and collapse when they realized that no more cargo was ever going to come for them. After his resurrection, we are united by faith with the Savior who will surely 
lead us to paradise and the new world that lies beyond. Worldly dreams and desires and aspirations, things that we want in and from this life, we may or may not achieve some of that. But hope and trust in Christ has made you a new person. The ship carrying your earthly dreams may not come in, but the ship of faith with Christ as its pilot and captain, your ship of faith will carry you safely into God's eternal kingdom. What unspeakable joy and wonder fills you as you are now receiving the goal of your faith, the salvation of your soul. Amen. <clears throat> the peace of God that passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. <clears throat>